it's what happens when cowards encounter adversity. When cowards encounter adversity, they give in quick. They give in quick and they decide that what they're doing by giving in quick is virtuous. There's also very clear influence of both the media and of the politicians by these massive pharmaceutical companies. If you want to talk about the most criticized and the most disparaged aspect of our society when it comes to like the dangers to people's health, the, the desire to earn unstoppable and constantly ever growing amounts of money every year, a big one was pharmaceutical companies. Forever we've been suspicious of those people. Forever people have pointed to them as being one of the real problems with capitalism that mixed with medicine. And here's my biggest fear. It's an engine for controlling the population. It's an engine for the institution of some sort of social credit system. If we give in to that kind of surveillance over here, the government will be watching every goddamn thing you do. And I think that's coming. Wow, yeah. Um... That's accurate, and it's not only coming, it's implemented in some countries already. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org, and we got a lot of absolutely crazy news to get into, as of course the police state is ratcheted up all in the name of a great global reset, which the president of China, Klaus Schwab, and Dr. Fauci are singing the praises of, which we're going to be talking about in this specific video, plus a lot more and all the latest news. But before we do that, the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was from a segment from the latest Samuel Rivera video. He is an extremely talented video producer, editor, graphics artist. He, he does it all. Two days ago, he just released his latest deception video, which is definitely significantly underviewed. And that's why we linked the video down in our description so you could watch it after this video. Seriously, incredible work by Samuel Rivera. Subscribe to his channel if you can. Now, currently in a lot of supermarkets, shelves have been left barren, not only by the Northeast winter storm, but more significantly because of global supply chain issues that through the intervention of the state have severely impacted our current financial markets. This as U.S. retailers are now reporting on average 12% of out of stock levels when it comes to commonly bought items at the supermarket. And with the way things have been going socially, politically, you can definitely expect these problems to be exacerbated from here and not lightening up anytime soon. And as you find it harder and harder to buy house hold items. The world's richest men have almost doubled their fortunes throughout this entire sickness. But don't worry, this larger inequality in all of the world's problem could soon be solved by Miss Hillary Clinton, as we're finding out from one of Bill Clinton's top advisors, Richard Morris, that he believes that there's a good chance that Hillary Clinton will run to be president of the United States in 2024, specifically if Democrats lose this upcoming congressional election. Now, what's the difference between Hillary Clinton and, of course, Joe Biden? Well, uh, not much. One is evil. One is not really there. Controlled by evil. As, of course, the two have nearly identical policies that have absolutely wrecked and destroyed this country from inside of it. This, as poll number after poll numbers, show a huge dissatisfaction to the current president of the United States and, of course, his policies on health, which have been making people, by and large, a lot less healthy. And after policy failure, after policy failure, as more and more people are getting sick, who's responsible for this? Well, of course, Joe Rogan, who, of course, was just orienting the intro video for this broadcast, as, of course, we found out recently, according to a full court press by the corporate media, that there was hundreds of doctors demanding that his voice be silenced. And uh, now we're finding out that they're wasn't a majority of medical doctors, but by uh, a lot of college professors, dentists, students, and of course, very little practicing doctors that put their name behind this larger smear campaign, trying to, of course, stop the discussion that Joe Rogan is having with many medical doctors that dare question the official narrative. And because of the surge of censorship that has been happening to medical doctors, pundits, journalists, commentators, this is why we're happier than ever to have LukeUncensored.com. We're building our own infrastructure, our, our own platform, where we get to say and do whatever we want. We release exclusive videos. There's also three masterclasses available for you on survival, journalism, traveling, expatting, 
All of it exclusively available on LukeUncensored.com. Click the link down below. As we're going to be releasing a very important video today about the latest comments by Dana White, who was also helped by Joe Rogan in ways that we can't even talk about on this platform. We can on our own, and I hope to see you there later on today for the latest drop of information that's going to be coming out after this video. Now, I think it's very fair to say that if you live in a major urban area, that your prospects of being safer and protected have dramatically declined within the last few years as we are inundated by corporate media horror stories of just some of the most horrible, inexcusable crimes that happen to innocent people who are just trying to live their lives. And as more and more random people get viciously attacked, a lot of people are asking themselves what has led to this absolute lawlessness. Some people talk about the increase of poverty. Others talk about billionaires buying off woke district attorneys but no matter what your theory to the cause of this it's important to acknowledge that this is happening even in New York City, where a new mayor who promised law and order, who campaigned on being tough on crime, Eric Adams, is having a hard time dealing with these atrocious crimes on innocent, innocent people. As even recently, when a felon shoved a woman in front of a subway, ending her life, police officers that should have been there, that should have intervened, were literally busy arresting protesters because the protesters didn't get government permission in order to eat at Applebee's. I'm not kidding you. Yes, the NYPD sent out an entire task force to hassle, arrest, and to go after people who wanted to eat in a restaurant without needing to show their private medical records. And the attack on this woman that cost her her life literally happened yards away. And overall, I do think it's very fair to say that governments have been building police states that are not tough on crime, but tough on anyone that stands in their way or the profit motives of their close friends in major industries like Big Pharma, as of course the Supreme Court just ruled a stop to one of Joe Biden's federal mandates but they did approve one specifically for hospitals that accept Medicaid and Medicare, which in, in my opinion is, is absolutely backwards. There's no science behind this decision. There's no data suggesting that this will somehow help. It only is creating chaos like in Los Angeles and Seattle, where sick people are told to go back to work that have already implemented this policy. Federally, we have seen the number of job openings for nurses go up dramatically for all of those people who, of course, are not blindly following authority and doing what they're told. This, as the Biden administration has also been making a list of people who object to this product by Big Pharma. Why are they making lists? Well, who in the world knows? As, of course, in other places, like Canada. The government there has already used this entire sickness for very sinister means, as even reported by the Ottawa Citizen that the military used this unique opportunity to, quote, test propaganda techniques on unsuspecting civilians. In Canada, the government there is also going to be fining you, stealing your money, and then potentially even imprisoning you if you don't pay them if you didn't take this product. As, of course, people who don't like this policy are not even allowed to leave. This doesn't seem like the behavior of anyone worrying for your health. This seems like the behavior of a sociopath that wants full total control and domination of your existence as you're forced to inject something in your body that there's no going back from. These are the similar policies also instituted in many places in Europe and also, of course, Australia that just kicked out what is renowned to be the world's number one tennis star for simply not complying with their whims. Now, what's going on here? Why is our society being transformed to this? Why is it going through what some people are calling a great reset? Well, that's because it is, as of course proposed by Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, the Davos Group, that is now holding their meetings virtually as Klaus Schwab just rambled about inequality and then talked about how he has great honor in reducing the excellency Xi Jinping, the president of China. Now what China is doing has been a role model for the world, as of course it's been the country that's been making leaps and bounds in what the rest of the world is being introduced to a surveillance state, a social credit score, a total track, trace, and database society that many sociopathic globalists want to implement here in the United States at all possible costs. 
This is how I see it because their own documents call for this. They've been obsessively talking about this. And they, of course, cheer on China when they implement a lot of these policies, which they seek to mimic here at home. Now, when China's talking about global cooperation, they're talking about expanding their sphere of influence, pushing for more globalization, which they have been some of the biggest winners because of, and has currently put them in this larger geopolitical position that they are in right now. To say that China is the role model for the technocracy is definitely an understatement, and to implement those policies in the United States, you sure as hell have to break a lot of eggs. And from everything I've been saying, according to my own personal opinion, that is the plan, as even the World Economic Forum predicts more economic instability, which of course overall will help implement its larger dependency of people relying on the state, sort of like a UBI system, which of course will be implemented in the social credit score, which is already being implemented in the disguise of a global domestic passport system, which has been implemented in many places around the world, including of course even here in hospitals that receive Medicaid and Medicare funding. Who, of course, does a lot of this implementing of these policies? Well, middlemen like Dr. Fauci, who also, of course, participated in the World Economic Forum, and, of course, is handsomely rewarded for implementing a lot of these policies, as, of course, Dr. Fauci is not only just the largest paid bureaucrat in Washington, D.C., but also one of the latest government officials who makes more money from his side hustles than, of course, his main job. As we're also learning through financial disclosures that Anthony Fauci shows total investment of $10.4 million, which is an absolute crap load of money, especially for a government worker. How did uh, Dr. Fauci make his money? Even on a, a high-paying government salary. This, as his wife also works as an INH leader. How was this man enriched throughout this entire saga? Well, that's some important questions that we definitely should be asking. As, of course, we're told just to trust the science and to believe in this man blindly. I say no. The only way that they could get away with all of this is through our blind acquiescence and ignorance and, of course, obedience. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to give it to them. And if you agree, share this video with your friends and family members so more people could understand some of my perspectives and opinions about what's really happening here from, of course, assessing this information. If you thought I was wrong in any way, shape, or form, let me know why down in the comment section below. I always appreciate your constructive criticism. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.